Hello, this is Nitin Dahad with EE Times, and uh, today I'm visiting the Paragraph uh, development facility in a place called Somersham, which is in Cambridgeshire, near a place called St Ives, and, uh, and I'm talking to Andy McInnes, who's the Chief Development Officer. Andy, hello. Hello, Nitin. How are you doing today? Good. So, Andy, um, this is one of um, uh, several, well, two facilities you have but also you have a, a place in the US. So just give me a little bit of uh, sort of a picture of uh, where this fits in, in your overall company. Uh. Certainly. So Paragraph is a fairly young company, uh, spun out from Cambridge University in 2015. Uh, CEO Simon Thomas and uh, Chief Science Advisor Ivor Guiney were working for Colin Humphrey at the university. Um, discovered the core IP which forms Paragraph and uh, spun the company off. So the company was formed in these surroundings in this building. It's pretty crude, it's evolved here. It's really evolved into the entity it is, it's not designed. So this is our development facility, whereas a few miles down the road in Hunton, as you mentioned, we have a purpose-built manufacturing facility. So. We're at that level of maturity now where we really want to translate our key technology and our key scientific discoveries into manufacturable products which we deliver to key customers. All right. We're going to go on to your, your key uh, proposition, which is um, graphene-based uh, uh, devices. But before we get there, because I, I think what I'd like to explore is just what are the... Um, what you've done, but also what are the challenges for graphene and you know, what are the opportunities. But before that, just tell me a little bit about your background because uh, you're no you're no newbie to this space as we chat, chatted earlier. No, it's uh, certainly, um, obviously the gray hair is well earned through uh, over 30 years in, in the compound semiconductor industry. Um, started life out in Gali Mars night, uh, shortly before, uh, around about the same time that cellular communications took off. So yep. in that environment, experienced what we called the hockey type growth. And this, this was at Triquint Semiconductor in Oregon, in the US. Uh, we, in that environment, we very quickly had to adapt to not just the explosive growth in the market, but the explosive growth of quality that was required uh, to supply into that market and, and continue uh, product and market development. Um, kind of draw parallels to those early days of Gallimard slide with what is happening here at Paragraph, which is the graphene material, um, Nobel Prize winners Kaim and Novoselov earned that prize for doing some simple yet brilliant work on isolating graphene. Uh, that really spurned um, a gold rush of discovery and demonstration of what exactly this material could do. And the bottom line is it's superlative in almost everything. It's right. Let's get into some of those uh, properties and per characteristics of graphene, and then maybe we can talk about you know, sort of where you are. Right. So the, you know, the bottom line is, again, graphene, it's a, you know, a single layer of graphite. It's just a single atomic layer. So it's those hexagons you see all around this building, but a single atomic layer. It has no third dimension. We call it a 2D material. Yeah. It has the highest mobility of uh, electronic materials known to man. Um, it's the strongest material known to man. It's thermally extremely conductive. We can go on, it's virtually transparent. When you look at those properties in isolation, this really is a wonder material. So. The work that Simon and Ivor did with uh, Professor Sir Colin Humphrey in Cambridge was really working on how to fully exploit those properties. And that, that's where they came up with this deposition technique, where graphene is deposited through a pseudo MOCVD process. And that graphene film stays on the host substrate through all of its processing. So it's more of a standard semiconductor process than what you'll also hear about graphene, which is this transfer process. And this comes back to your original point. Graphene has been around for a number of years now. Yep. 
and yet we're still really not seeing the true potential of products based on graphene. That's the era we're about to enter here at Paragraph. My role, and with that background from Compound Semiconductor, where witnessed explosive growth and how you adapt to that explosive growth. So transition between technological prowess to manufacturing prowess. That's really my role here, is to interface with all the incredible scientists that we have in this building. We are not short on technical prowess. But translating that into a manufacturable and sustainable product, that's my role here as Chief Development Officer. And, and that's been the biggest challenge for Graphene all, uh, all these years anyway. So. And I think one of the things you mentioned is how, and, and you talked about it just now, where you know, it's taken, grown on, uh, a, 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 say, copper, and then moved, where that then becomes very uh, bitty and granular, whereas you're, you're trying to put it directly onto the substrate. Not trying, you've done, you, this is your IP, you've put it onto the substrate, so there's no transfer, so it's scalable. Is that right? Yeah, in, simply in most uh, demand in electronic environments, it's really not the properties of the bulk materials that you worry about, it's the impurities, the defects. Okay. You know, how is that material impaired? We grow and we perfect our growth of graphene on the substrate, and we leave it there. We don't believe in pulling off and transferring. In that process of transfer of graphene to another host substrate, we believe that there is damage imparted to that graphene. It's also simply not scalable. Mm. It's not a manufacturing process that has scalability uh, uh, or any other merit associated with it. Um, we believe uh, that we can perfect and optimize the growth of graphene on various substrates. We, we have a ver variety of hosts. And then that perfection of growth will translate into an end product, which retains those superlative properties that we just discussed earlier. Okay, there's many questions that come from that. And one of them is, well, uh, why do you think Paragraph is the one to be able to do all of this? Uh, what's, I think you've already said, you know, you've got that IP, but you know, it's still very early stage. So, you know, where are you in that, in that sort of process at the moment? Yeah, we, um, we have the base uh, properties of the materials that we grow, which we uh, can very easily define as being um, excellent in nature. But really the proof of the pudding is in the eating, and that's the products that we make. So we do have a number of standard products that we make with the graph graphene that we grow. Um, one family is surrounding hall sensors. Yes. They are, we sell them now. We're supplying them into qualification uh, environments, mainly aimed at automotive. And these are, these are discrete components? These are discrete components. Uh, and I think you told me earlier, at various trial stages, right? like 95, sorry, 100 something dollars plus. Oh, that, that's uh, actually the biosensors okay. or the molecular okay. sensors. Okay. Th those, that's another avenue of uh, exploitation of graphene properties. Um, molecular sensors, basically graphene as a a G effect, a graphene field effect transistor, which is basically a source drain with a, a graphene layer as the conductive channel, is an incredibly sensitive detector, sensitive down to molecular level. So with the uh, adaption of a receptor layer on top of that channel, um, an assay which would pull out a protein or a strand of DNA, we can detect individual molecules on that graphene surface. We can also do that with atmospheric gases, methane, um, acetone. Uh, we can also use these devices for chemical sensors, mm. pH, potassium, sodium. Those are available right now, and as you pointed out, we sell those uh, currently for about around 95 pounds as development, development vehicles. About costs. $120, something like that. Yeah, about $120. Yeah. So. Um, and those are really just demonstration vehicles to allow our customers to develop their own assays, to develop their own receptor layers, to do their own chemical molecular sensor development on our unique platform, which is this pristine graphene. 
So we'd like to introduce the world to our graphene, we'd like the world to exploit it, and ultimately we'd like that world to come back and design their own product on our process and on our graphene. And at the moment, I think you talked about the point of entry is the, those whole sensors and the biosensors, is that right? Because, yes. I mean, uh, if you think about it, you know, there are potentially lots of opportunity, but uh, you need to find a point of entry because I think you need to prove, prove that to customers. A a exactly. If you, if you scour the literature on the potential of graphene, it spans the whole technological world. RF devices, CMOS replacement, UV sensors. It, it has multiple applications, but they each require a certain amount of development and a certain amount of acceptance in the technological world. We've chosen some discrete devices, whole sensors, whole sensors at cryo temperatures, where graphene has a demonstrated advantage. Basically, we can build a better mousetrap by using a graphene sensor over the incumbent technologies. They are more sensitive, they can, they can work in aggressive environments. Yeah, you talk down to absolute zero and... Absolute yeah. zero, it's a, it is one of the few materials which will work and sense, particularly magnetic fields, down to absolute zero. So their use in quantum computing environments is essential to enable that technology to progress. Um, but at the other end of the scale, our whole sensors work over a range of temperatures from absolute zero to more automotive type environments, 125 degrees Celsius. Mm. So the sensitivity of the range and the environments they can work in really place graphene hall sensors as a decided, decidedly better mousetrap for applications where hall sensors in automotive are currently used. Right, and where are you in, in that journey in terms of customer trials and, and, and I think, yeah, it, it's still some way away from sort of scale production, but I think you know, you know, there yes. are still project, uh, projects, products uh, being developed right now. There's really um, two almost parallel paths where we're involved in the, the displacement of an incumbent in a current automotive uh, application. That, that is a rather lengthy qualification process. Um, Automotive industry has developed the highest standards of quality and uh, delivery demonstration, and we are having to satisfy those. We are in, um, we are collaborating with all the top tier players in that environment, but it's just a time cycle. It's just a, the time it takes to uh, to uh, complete those qualification tests to get our devices in the volumes in those environments. In quantum computing and some other applications where position sensors are not, do not require that same stringent qualification timeline, we've got more direct sales, more direct applications which are immediate and, and are, are happening right now. But those are low volume, high value. Yes. Uh, what about the high volume, that's the biosensors I guess? Um, biosensors, uh, ultimately we expect to be a commodity product, yeah. uh, but basically very high volume. So comparatively to what we're selling for now, they will be a lower price, mm. but much higher volume and across all chemical environments. Right. Molecular, gases, biosensing arrays, uh, um, assays. And um, so we're really going after, at the moment, the, the high value, low volume, where we don't have to encounter these qualification cycles. But a longer term goal are these uh, automotive and then just general consumer applications, potentially even health uh, that, that, care that's A few years away because I think there's two aspects. There's one, customers getting it in there and you know, getting designed in, but then the other thing is capacity. And I think you're investing in it. This facility, I think you can do two inch, Huntington you can do six inch, but I think you're looking to build new fabs as well. So, yes, you, you, yeah. a, a, exactly. This, this is a two-inch um, substrate facility right now. It's, it's a, effectively a development fab. A few miles down the road in Huntington, um, we have a much larger facility. It's going to be six-inch based. And that's really to 
deliver in volume. So we're, we will come online later this year in Huntington. The first, the tools are in there. The clean room is operable right now. Uh, we will be in the last quarter this year, we'll be moving people and start up the, uh, uh, qualifying the tooling in Huntington. And that's our first step into high volume. Um, the available markets out there suggest that uh, that volume will be consumed within the next few years. So we're already thinking about the next stage after that. So development here, early stage manufacturing in Huntingdon, and then beyond that, somewhere else. So if you're preparing for volume, obviously you've got customers who are already committed to do some volume for next year, I guess. Again, there is, we have customers who with uh, targets, be they performance, or qualification based have committed to certain volumes. So we have an idea of what volumes okay. we're likely to enter into. Okay. So it's really just going through those milestones, some of which are simply time based to, to get that uh, volume introduced. Now for Paragraph, you know, obviously um, graphene you know, potentially is a huge market, but what's the biggest excitement and opportunity for you? Uh, because you joined a couple of years ago, you, you, you're thinking, this is a great opportunity to do what I didn't do, uh, maybe with Gallim last night. But yeah, you know, what's the biggest excitement and opportunity for you? Well, I mean, the, you know, part of the excitement is is that um, taking that 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 very key technology and translating it into a tangible product which you can deliver at volume. That, that that's that's part of the part of the DNA of of of, of what's driven me over these uh, number of years. But if you look out, and again, you scour the literature from what graphene can actually do, you've got to look out into the RF space. You've got to look out into CMOS type replacements. Um, you know, there's all this talk of Moore's law ending and Denard's law of the power consumption of devices, you know, the Denard scaling. Direct source FETs, which would involve graphene and other similar materials can get you that same transistor activity at much lower power consumption. That's a few years out, but that's certainly part of our journey. So these are the humble beginnings, the, the development lab here in Summersham, Cambridgeshire. Mm. We're going to transition into uh, a manufacturing facility in, in Huntingdon. But down the road, you know, if the gray hair still exists at that point, um, hopefully we'll be seeing graphene-based CMOS light devices being made in a UK company or a UK company which licenses it to other countries all over the world. And is that something you say is unique to Paragraph in the UK in terms of what you've done? We believe that Paragraph as a company at the moment is fairly unique. We believe our core technology is unique and well protected. So we, we firmly believe really the deposition it's process. It's a deposition, but we're also we have some aspects of our manufacturing okay. process covered as okay. well. So we, we believe we've got a, a very firm base for our growth or to export our growth mm. into other ventures which we will draw benefit from. Well, you moved uh, from the US after 25 years back to the UK for this. So is the US a big opportunity for you to go back there? Uh, certainly. I mean, the, the, the US has the funding. It has the mechanisms to expand. Um, traditionally, as we, we all know, a lot of ideas are generated in the UK and they get uh, translated into US or, or Asia, yeah. or Asia yeah. countries all around the world. Yeah. We'd like to think that this uh, idea that's generated here in the UK can stay and grow and benefit the UK. Short term, it definitely will. You know, we're opening a manufacturing facility in Huntington. That supports the whole ecosystem. Tool support, clean room support, you know, the, as well as the direct uh, personnel we employ. But the way of the world is that this, for this idea to be idea of graphing to be fully exploited, it may require a much larger response, which would be, could be the US, could be Asia, could be China, could be anywhere in the world. Okay. Well, Andy, th thank you very much. Thank you very much, Nathan. Been a pleasure.